What's up, little pups? Today, we're going to be talking about how the special illustration rare or the alt art effect is really important to notice before seeing if a Pokemon card gets really blown up out of proportion or not. So we're going to go through some examples. Um, I do believe, so coming into Surging Sparks, a lot of people do have a, a lot of pessimism for the Pikachu set because apparently Pikachu, uh, you know, Pikachu's like a vivid voltage is a good example. Um, the set, you know, is not the most regarded Sword and Shield set, even though I, I personally really like it because the amazing rares are amazing, to be honest, but they got forgotten over the Trainer Gallery or the Illustration Rare Pokemon cards. And then the, the Rainbow Rare Pikachu is, you know, is, he's the Chongachu he was made a name for in the Sword and Shield games. But it is objectively not as regarded as the Pokemon cards that came after it, which were the Altarts or the, um... Or the special illustration nerds in Scarlet Violet. So I'm going to talk about how Pikachu is going to be one of the biggest cards in Scarlet Violet for sure with this special illustration rare. Because I do not think, I really do not think Pokemon is going to fumble the artwork for a Pikachu poster boy card. And even with the uh, even with the stellar crown, I really thought Pikachu, you know, would have been really it would have been really cool if Pikachu got the water crown and then like a surfing Pikachu. That would have been really awesome. But you know, it's 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 an unused uh, it's an unused idea that could you know be up and coming in another set. It's a really cool idea. We've had a surfing Pikachu since the earliest. Uh, iterations of the Pokemon anime and we even had the surfing Pikachu in celebrations and uh, obviously the surfing Pikachu all the way back then and I really do think that's a really cool idea for a Pikachu. But anyways, let's go into some Pokemon cards that were impacted by this effect of the alternate arts or the special illustration rares. We're gonna start with Gengar, the most expensive card in the Fusion Strike set from Sword and Shield, the famous Fusion Strike set that had the uh, Mew and the Gengar and the Espeon as well. So, of course, Gengar here is actually one of the most expensive Gengar cards right before the Sabrina's Gengar and honestly Sabrina's Gengar not even like this card is even more expensive than the first edition first iteration of Gengar which is the the fossil one what like bro like it's more expensive than the Gengar EX from the Ruby Sapphire era and the Gengar from Expedition, but not more than the Sabrina's Gengar. I do wonder why that's the case. Maybe Sabrina's Gengar, there's less supply. Or maybe it's just because the artwork is just objectively that much better than the first edition Fossil Gengar. But anyways, the Gengar VMAX right here used to be almost a $400 card back then. Uh, but now is running around about almost $300. Uh, it does say like $300 or so. But anyways... This card, you know, the, the, the beautiful artwork speaks for itself. Even the Gengar Mimikyu tag team from Sun and Moon got this uh, this alternate art effect because uh, alternate arts did start with the Sun and Moon tag teams. So that's a, that's a really, good, uh, really good example of the alternate art effect. Next up, we're going to be talking about... Now, next time we're going to be talking about Rayquaza. We have the Rayquazas. Rayquaza Gold Star, of course, one of the most expensive Gold Stars, one of the most regarded Gold Stars from the EX Deoxys set, which is one of the rarest sets in Pokemon. Uh, you know, the Rayquaza Gold Star in a PSA 10 usually goes for about $50,000 or $40,000 or so. Uh, I think it used to go in, during COVID around 80000 But uh, raw, it does go for almost 2000 Now, the Rayquaza next to it is the famous Evolving Skies Rayquaza Altart. So, this card, of course, beautiful as always and is more expensive than every other Rayquaza in a raw form. Now, I'm not counting... PSA uh, grades because I mean I guess the P B via PSA grades some of these Rayquazas beat this Rayquaza but I'm not really sure but anyways in a raw form this Rayquaza is more expensive than the Call of Legends shiny Rayquaza from Heart Gold Soul Silver last set one of the rarest set also <laughs> one of the rarest sets in Pokemon They're more expensive than the Ancient Origins beautiful gold mega Rayquaza and more expensive than the Rayquaza EXs from the Ruby Sapphire era just like the Rayquaza Gold Star so that's a beautiful another example of the alt art effect oh boy this Pokemon it's really surprising that this Pokemon 
got this expensive as an alt heart. I this is the most this was the most surprising to me honestly in the Sword and Shield era. Blaziken of course is one of the coolest Pokémon ever made, especially in the Ruby Sapphire games. You cannot deny that. It is really cool, but it never really got, you know, like a name for itself in the card games. It you know, like it it wasn't really like something that people went like, "Oh my gosh, the Blaziken Chase." Well, I'm um, seeing now that Blaziken, there was a Blaziken EX in the Team Magma and Team Aqua sets, uh, run, hovering about $200. But this Blaziken right here, with the interesting artwork that it has, blew up and is almost a 300 dark card from the Chilling Rain set in Sword and Shield. That is a beautiful example of the alt art effect and how it grew much more expensive due to hype, I guess. But I mean, I. You know, the, the hype is still here. The hype from there is still here, even if you don't think so, because we got some sets that, you know, weren't the most fan favorite. Maybe you think a lot of Pokemon enthusiasts did leave. Later on, we are going to be talking about how that's not the case in a beautiful example that's coming up. But anyways, Bla Rick, uh, Blaziken, one of the most impressive uh, sp uh, alternate artifacts that we're giving to a Pokemon that didn't really have an insane... Uh, you know, card history in the chase department. I guess this Blaziken EX. Um, I, a lot of EXs did get a blow up recently. Uh, they weren't as regarded, but now they are. And I actually really agree with it because the EX era Pokemon cards are so gorgeous. Oh my gosh. A beautiful example. Another beautiful example here in the Giratina. I'm a huge fan of the black and white Giratina EX and the black and white EXs in general. I think they're cooler than the XY or any other uh, EX full arts, regular full arts at least. But the Giratina V did surprise us with a really expensive, almost $400 Giratina V alt art in Lost Origin. And you know, the next one that's after Giratina Lost Origin, the gold Giratina V-Star from Crown Zenith. Now, Crown Zenith is way more printed, and um, I guess it, it it was like, well, it's about as easy as pulling this one, isn't it? Well, anyways, it's not as regarded as the Lost Origin one, but as you can see, Giratina never really was a card that was regarded as a massive chase. Um, you can even see that the most expensive Giratina out, uh, out of out of the range of the Sword and Shield era and this random pre-release staff lost under a lot of pre-release staff pre-release staff cards are really expensive because of the rarity of them. Uh, you can see the most expensive one was the Black and White Dragon's Exalted Full Art, which uh, raw it was almost an $80 card. Compared to the almost $400 Giratina from Lost Origin, you could definitely see the alt art impact. And I honestly really agree with the price because it is a master piece of a card it is a masterpiece the artwork is Mwah. next up one of the most impressive i know i said blaziken was the most impressive alt art impacted pokemon card but this one honestly kind of has to take the cake um aerodactyl obviously aerodactyl one of the oh, again one of the coolest pokemon uh we all thought aerodactyl looked a lot like charizard back then he even had the same episode where uh ash's uh charmeleon volume to charizard Aerodactyl got an impressive card in Lost Origin, the same size as Giratina, at an almost $100 markup, when the previous most expensive card from Aerodactyl was the EX era, which, uh, like I said, a lot of EX cards from that era got boosted up a lot, uh, was a 76, about a $76 card. Wow. Yeah. You, the alt art effect is real. Any Pokemon that we get that wasn't really as noticed before with incredible artwork you can definitely you can definitely hope and expect for this type of uh this type of uh, effect all right well anyways next up let's go into you know umbreon one of the the most fan favorite pokemon especially in the card era and the card uh, world um umbreon doesn't have you know umbreon doesn't have a, a shortage of Examples of really expensive cards. Even the Umbreon from Unseen Forces is an almost three seven hundred and fifty dollar card. Uh, the Umbreon from Neo Discovery and the Umbreon from the also Neo eras. But you know what's the most expensive one? Probably the most famous card from the past decade. The most famous card, and you already know it's the Moonbreon, the almost one thousand dollar Moonbreon Umbreon Vmax Altart from Evolving Skies. Holy! Now, you could probably tell why um, the artwork goes crazy. It's the alt art effect. It just is. It's the alt art, eff alt art effect. 
and it it just it it is a beautiful card. So any card that has a special illustration rare coming from now on that has incredible artwork has in incredible artwork. You could expect it, you know, to um to be something unexpected. <laughs> All right, well, anyways, next up, of course, the card coming into the postmodern era, the ultra-modern era, the beautiful example of the modern era. Now, a lot of people did not have high hopes for Twilight Masquerade, and I will say that I had hopes for it before it even released. Even since we got Crimson Haze, I was one of the believers. Don't believe me? Just hop on my Discord, look at the history of messages that I, um, me literally saying... This is the first time we get an insane Greninja card chase that actually looks good. That um, really, you know, could hype up the fans. Because Greninja literally could be named, and I would not be surprised by this, the post, the modern Charizard of our time. The modern Charizard. It literally could. I was around when XY8 came out. I picked Greninja because I really liked Greninja. And the anime literally, you know, uh, really pumped up Greninja to incredible levels of hypeness and popularity. Greninja is that guy, and he totally deserves this almost $300 markup. And the alternate art was honestly, to me, incredible. A lot of, I know there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, criticism about it, where, like, the, I guess the, the, the paint splash um type of thing doesn't you know people can't really see the greninja honestly i could see it perfectly well honestly uh i never understood the the criticism but obviously it has to be it you know it probably makes sense there's probably logic to it because a lot of people have the same opinion so i'm, I'm definitely not going to discard that but uh you know the special illustration rare effect not so much the altered effect the special illustration rare effect which is the one where we gotta watch out for in the next upcoming sets you know, they could throw, for example, let's say, for example, because we are going to get a black and white exclusive set. Because in Japan, they leaked that we're going to get a Reshram and a Zekrom set, a white, black bolt, a white flare type, I think it's called. And if they go really crazy with, let's say, a, let's say Black Hurum, a Black Hurum EX Special Illustration Rare, and the art is impeccable, you could expect that boy to be incredibly expensive that's just an example you know uh, another example is stellar crowns terrapagos you know terrapagos is a very new pokemon uh i guess the pokemon anime with pokemon horizons fans could get down on it really well uh i don't really get down on it that much i don't really care for it that much but the artwork you cannot argue that the artwork is that the artwork isn't amazing it is, which is why it's an almost, you know, an, an about $100 card. I do believe it's going to at least hold up $80 to $100 in the long term because it is just a gorgeous card and is also competitively viable. But this Greninja has so much lore going into it and so much reason for why it's so expensive. This is a prime example of the ultra modern today example of how this, uh, the, the special illustration rare effect impacts a Pokemon cards, you know, uh, hype and price markup. <clears throat> Before we go into the Pikachu, uh, you know, Latias. Latias is getting a special illustration rare, you know, uh, card. Uh, the most expensive Latias card is the Latias and Latias GX tag team from Team Up. And after that, the Latias Gold Star and the Latias EX. Now, I don't believe the Latias EX we're getting is the craziest Latias artwork. Um, so I personally believe. If I were to put Latias in this list, I would definitely, I do believe it's going to be at least, at, you know, about an $80 card or $70 to $80 card. I would definitely put it at about a $70 to $80 markup. So you can pretty much see where I would put this Latias here. I don't believe that Latias, you know, is going to be insane crazy. I just don't get the same vibes that I did Greninja. And I did get the Greninja vibes. I did, I did. I just didn't buy it because I was hoping, you know, I was hoping Greninja would follow the same path as the uh, as the previous sets where the, the big chase would, you know, go below $100. I was even looking at it when Greninja was at $130 and I did not press the button, the buy button. What I did press was the twilight masquerade case button i did buy 
Twilight Masquerade when it was uh you know about a hundred dollars they like less than a little bit less than a hundred dollars I did have a lot of hope for that set because I really liked the vibes of it and the Greninja was crazy you know Greninja honestly I, I just love the Greninja I've always loved it I've always loved it I've never changed my mind and I hate that a lot of people went against the Twilight Masquerade uh well a lot of people still do think Twilight Masquerade is trash and I completely disagree with them but it is what it is. All right, now to the big uh, topic, which is the Pikachu. You can see the Pikachu examples we've had for the most expensive Pikachus. We have the Poncho Pikachus, which made a name for themselves. Very expensive, rare Pikachu cards that people love to grade. We have the Pikachu Red Cheeks. Very famous, you know, the very famous uh, Shadowless uh, base set. Very famous, very, also made a name for itself, you know, people were like, oh, is this the red cheeks? Oh, no, it's just the yellow cheeks. Well, it's the red cheeks. <laughs> all right, with the Pikachu Gold Star, all the Gold Stars go crazy. They are incredibly rare, incredibly rare cards for incredibly expensive booster boxes. Uh, we also have a, an, a random $300 pack, prize pack series, Pikachu VMAX, and the uh, Misprint, you know, Misprint is just an exception. Uh, Ponchos, exception, you know, all these cards. But the, the card that I wanted to talk about with the Pikachu was this one. The Vivid Voltage. The Vivid Voltage Rainbow Pikachu. Now, a lot of people are making comparisons this card and the Pikachu we're going to get. One thing about this Pikachu is that it's incredible that's even at $110. It is incredible. It is incredible because a, a rainbow card like this usually doesn't go for that much. It really doesn't. And this was pre-alt art. Or, you know, post Sun and Moon alt art where we didn't get any alt arts. And then pre uh, chilling, pre battle styles alt arts. And uh, so that's why pe people are making this comparison that this set might not be crazy because the Pikachu is in there. First thing, first thing, the Surging Sparks is going to be crazy already without even the Pikachu. The Latias, Lysia, and. Any other incredible special illustration or that we might get in the Pikachu, that Japanese half of the Pikachu set, which is going to come out in in about a month or so. Uh, but we also have the Pikachu. And do you really think Pokemon is going to fumble the artwork for a Pikachu in the front? Do you really think that's going to happen? It isn't going to happen. So definitely expect that Pikachu to go much more than this rainbow rare Pikachu. The special illustration rare effect is 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 something to notice. It is something to notice. And that Pikachu, I assure you, will be more expensive, if not way more expensive than this Pikachu right here. It is definitely going to be a contender to the Greninja. Definitely going to be a contender to Greninja. I would not be surprised if it goes at the same level as Greninja. Uh, now I don't I'm not I wouldn't be surprised if it goes below Greninja, but it will be a very expensive card. So if history repeats itself like it did with Greninja, where Greninja was dropping for, to like $100 and then rose all the way up. If we find that Pikachu is that expensive, you know, at like about $100, let's say even $120, $130. Heck, I, I think I would buy, I, I think I'm going to put my pants on and I'm, I would even try to buy it at $150. If like I'm seeing that it's dropping and then it's going up again, something like that, you know, at that point I would I would make the decision to buy so I definitely think this could be a very expensive Pikachu. It, the special illustration rare effect could go into place. We have not had a special illustration rare or an altar Pikachu. We did have some interesting Pikachus back then in XY with the Generations Pikachu. And, uh, you know, we had the illustration rare 151 Pikachu. But, I mean, the 151 set was just too crazy. Too many things going on. So Pikachu didn't have a chance to stand out. Only the Master Ball version in the Japanese side. But... This Pikachu right here is expensive as it is pre Altart season. One of the cheapest uh, Sword and Shield booster boxes, Vivid Voltage. One of the least, least regarded, and it is still at $110. Do you really think that this crazy Pikachu that's going to come out, which I do think it's going to be at least really good artwork. Let's not say crazy, but let's say in really good artwork. Do you really think that Pikachu isn't going to be at least like like an 180 dollar card this is a bold prediction i know but i truly think the special art the special illustration rare effect is going to come into place with all the examples i've shown you so anyways uh surging sparks is looking really good and uh let's hope for some banger special illustration rares from the half of the other you know the pikachu side that's about to come and uh, come out in japanese so 
Yeah, hello, pups. I hope y'all are hyped. Uh, there's a really good future for the Pokemon card industry. Now, I do. I really want to say that the the booster boxes. I you know, Surging Sparks might be really hyped up. I don't know if the booster boxes are gonna be the 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 incredible thing because I know Pokemon is going to overprint this. It's too obvious. Pokemon is if there's any set that Pokemon is gonna overprint, it will be 151 for sure. And it will be this set for sure. Like, this set, they've been hyping it up before even Stellar Crown got you know, released. Um, they they even dropped the pre-release promos before Stellar Crown's pre-release promos. Like, they know what they have. They know what they have. I don't... So, I, I do think this is going to be overprinted, but I do believe this Pikachu is going to hold up and is going to be one of the most expensive Scar Scar Violet cards for sure. I honestly can almost bet on it. But anyways, little pups... I hope y'all had a uh, y'all learned something in this video and uh yeah that's it keep on to the next news